Okay. In this uh, video, I will be discussing two, ex uh, two examples about Coulomb's law. Uh, the first one telling me about two protons. They are 3.6 nanometer apart. And you can see from the figure they are the one in purple, Q1 and Q2 with the positive uh, charges. Uh, asking me what is the total electrostatic force on an electron located on the line between them and in exact position it's 1.2 nanometer from one of the protons so I have the choices to place the, pro the electron here or to the other side it doesn't matter uh, as long as it's between the two protons with that distance from one of them so first of all I need to start calculating the electrostatic force generated by the first proton on this electron then I need to calculate the uh, electrostatic force generated by the second proton on the same electron then I need to find the total or the net electrostatic force acting on this electron and the direction so let's begin the process for as a formula we know we have to use if I call it F1 because it's the force generated by the first proton on that electron it will be K uh, Q1 times uh, the electron over the distance between them squared so it will be 8.9 10 to the power 9 multiplied with the charge of the protons 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 again the charge of the electron 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 and all that will be divided on 1.2 10 to the power minus 9 squared if we calculate this one that should give us 1.58 10 to the power minus 10 Newton okay now for the second part or the second force generated by the second proton I will have the same formula K Q2 multiplied with the electron divided on R squared and that should give us 8.9 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge of the proton multiplied by the charge of this electron and all will be divided on the distance which is now the 2.4 10 to the power minus 9 and it's again squared now, if we do the math, that should give us 3.95, 10 to the power minus 11 a Newton. But this is not the total electrostatic force on that electron. This is the force generated by the first proton and the force generated by the second proton to decide the net electrostatic force we could do this process so to help us I can tell all right this is our target this is the electron it's our target now the electron as we know it's a negative charge the proton is a positive charge so the electrostatic force direction of F1 will be an attraction now for the the force J direction between the second proton and the electron also is going to be attraction and it will be this way so that's F1 and this is F2 now as you can see they are opposite in direction so I can simply calculate the total electrostatic force in this gap here so net I can call it it will be F1 minus F2 
and if I do that math, it's 1.58 to the power minus 10 minus 3.95 10 to the power minus 11. It will give us 0.118 nano. Uh, Newton, sorry, yeah. So it's about almost like 0.12 nano a newton. So that's the net force or the total electrostatic force generated by these two protons on that electron. Now, in terms of the direction, uh, it's going to be very clearly it's going to the uh, to the left because F1 is bigger than F2. So the net direction will be that way. F net. All right. So that's for first example. Now let's move to the next one. The next one is looks similar but in a different way. What I have here uh, in this figure below find again the net electrostatic force acting on Q3, the one in red. If the distance between Q1 and Q3, so I have Q1 here, that's Q1, to Q3, it's 2 meters. And the place of Q2, right at the middle between Q1 and Q3, which can simply give us the indication that, all right, the distance, the total distance here is two meter and the distance between Q2 and Q3 also is one meter okay so that's for first part we can distinguish distances so I can tell I can call this as R1 and I can call this R2 now let's calculate the, the electrostatic force generated by um, the force of, of Q1, or the generated because of the charge 1, on uh, 3. So it is the force on 3 because of 1. Okay? Same again, it is the formula of column. And it's going to be R1 square. So what I'll do here, once again, 18 to the power 9 multiplied by 2, 10 to the power minus 4. That's the charge Q1. Q3, it's 100, or I can say, well, it's, sorry, it's 1, 10 to the power minus 4, divided on 2 square. And that should give me the value of 44.5 Newton. All right, so I can tell now how much is the force generated because of charge 1 on 3. Now, if I want to decide the direction, well, we can see that Q3 is a negative charge and Q1 is a positive charge. This will be generating an attraction force, which means the direction of the this force will be going toward F, sorry, uh, toward Q1. So that's the direction of the force of 3, 1. Okay, so usually I'll go to, to my target, which is Q3, and decide the direction from there. Okay, let's continue with calculating the force generated because of charge 2 sorry uh, because of charge 2 on 3 I'm just gonna save the time and replace the numbers straight away that will be 1 10 to the power minus 4 and again 1 10 to the power minus 4 and all will be divided on 1 meter squared if we do the math, uh, 
that should give us 133.5 Newton. Okay? So I have now um, the force generated because of 1 on 3 and the force caused by 2 on 3. Once again, let's decide the direction of this uh, F32. Again, we go to our target, which is a Q3, and we look at it. It's a negative charge. With a Q2, it's a positive charge. That will be generated, generating again another attraction force, and that will call it for F31. Now, from what we see here, I have the two forces, the direction of them going together to the west. So simply, I can say F net, in this case, equal. Just add them up to find out how much is the value and in this case it will be 44.5 plus 133.5 so we can that will give me 178 as the value I wanted and the direction will be going to the west I hope this uh, video is useful to you guys and make good use of it. Thank you.